We just did a video showing you how to test your scheduling policies in Gazelle. So I want to do a follow-up video to show you how you can adjust your scheduling rules to create different results, both in your smart routes and your self-scheduling. So log into Gazelle, and we're going to go to settings. Now, it's important to note that each technician gets their own scheduling rules. So you will need to have each of your technicians, if you have multiple technicians, log into their account and edit their individual rules. So come over to scheduling policies and hit edit. Now when you first log in you'll see four sub tabs availability, my policies, company policies, and service list. These two can only be edited by the administrators because company policies and service list apply to all users across the board. But technicians will be able to individually change their availability and their policies. So let's talk about the things that you will change. Uh, first, the service area, right? You might want to expand or shrink your service area to get certain addresses uh, inside or outside your area. Uh, you can change your scheduling rules. We won't dive into this right now, uh, but you can basically change you know, which days you want to work, uh, whether you want to start your day at your house versus at your client, uh, how you want to end your day, what time you want to be home, things like that. Uh, we'll cover that in a little more detail in a moment. Uh, but you, it's also important to note that you can have multiple service areas. So we have some technicians who actually have service areas on the West Coast and the East Coast, and they will actually fly to the area and spend a month and then fly back to another area. And so if that's you, we'll, we'll cover that in a different video. Uh, but you can have multiple service areas even within closer proximity to each other. Um, Okay, my policies. Uh, this is where you're going to make the bulk of your changes. And actually, we can isolate the changes you're going to make primarily to the appointment buffer time, the client self-scheduling maximum drive time policy, and the open day policy. Um, all of these other changes will have mild effects on your algorithm and the results that are being returned. But these three things have the biggest effect. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit of strategy for each one. First, let's go back to availability and talk about a few things. When do you want multiple service areas? Well, we found that if you are going to be going somewhere and getting a hotel or staying overnight, you want a different service area. If you are simply making day trips to and from an area, you want to incorporate that inside your primary service area. Uh, all of your scheduling rules, Monday to Friday, uh, are pretty straightforward. You can edit it here, and you can just check the day of the week that you want, create a start time and an end time, and your preferred times for an open day, meaning you have nothing scheduled yet, uh, and you want to start off by offering clients these times. Once a client picks a time, we will build your calendar off of that appointment, both going forward and backwards. So if somebody first picked the noon appointment, we're going to try to optimize your schedule both for the morning and afternoon. Opposed to somebody starting off picking the afternoon appointment, we're actually going to build your calendar going backwards for the day, optimizing it as we go. Your start and end location for each day is important. So when you edit this, uh, you're going to want to put an address, and it could be a different address if you start at a shop and end at your home, or vice versa. Um, so it's important to have those addresses be appropriate. Uh, so you just want to make sure that those are correct. All right, so now let's go to my policies. Uh, appointment buffer time, this is one of the biggest mistakes we see people make. Uh, prior to using automated scheduling and smart routes, you know, a lot of technicians will add a ton of extra buffer time to try to account for traffic and drive time and all that stuff. Now that all of that is accounted for within our algorithm, and our scheduling rules, um, you don't really need that much time. So this is really enough time to chat with the client and do paperwork. Uh, for most people, this is 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so feel free to add or adjust your buffer time. What that's going to do, if your buffer time is too big, you're not going to fit as many appointments in the day. Um, so if you're actually trying to shrink the number of appointments, that's a good way to do it. Um, all right, client self-scheduling maximum drive time. This is a setting that we tend to edit a lot, but the most important thing to note is this rule 
uh, limits the routes that people see when they are self-scheduling. And this is the one rule that will really help to optimize your schedule and pack it tightly. As a general rule, this should be one-third to one-half of your service area. If it is less than that, you're going to find that your self-scheduling is way too restricted. If it's more than that, you're basically going to be allowing your clients to schedule you ping-ponging across your service area. Uh, sometimes that's desirable if you're really starting your business and you're trying to offer clients everything you have available. But pretty quickly, you're going to want to shrink that back to somewhere between one-third and one-half. So if you find that clients aren't getting enough offerings and when they're self-scheduling, go ahead and expand that out a bit. And just keep going out in five-minute increments and continuing to test until you get the desired result. And lastly, the open day rule is the third biggest change you can make. Um, the best way to think about this is if you have an open day tomorrow, you probably want to fill it. Uh, but if you have an open day six months from now, you probably want to pack your appointments a little bit tighter. You want to treat those two open days differently. And so this is where you get to penalize your open days and say, listen, I actually want to try to pack all my appointments onto days that already have something scheduled, if at all possible. Um, opposed to having no penalty, you're basically saying, hey, if I have an opening, I don't care if it's on an open day, I want to fill it. And when you change this policy, there's a sliding scale. Uh, you can go from do not penalize to severely penalize. Um, so that's what that does. These are the rules that we're primarily balancing and changing. Uh, lastly, you can turn traffic on and off. So if you're in a major metropolitan area, you probably want to use the average traffic patterns for each route, and that will help take into account rush hour and things like that. Um, so that's just an on-off switch. Um, and lastly, the strategy of your long-term scheduling policy and your short-term scheduling policy, this is the one we edit most often. Um, usually it is between... 8 hours and 72 hours. Uh, most of the time people will choose something like 24 hours because when you're asleep in your bed at midnight, you might not want somebody booking an 8 a.m. appointment uh, or requesting that route or that day. Um, so usually somebody's going to set this between 72 hours and 24 hours. Uh, and you also get to change whether or not things inside your short-term policy are shown. So you can say, hey, don't show anything inside the short-term limit. I don't care if I'm available. Uh, versus show it, but when the client tries to select that event, tell them they have to call me to book it because of the short notice. And you can change the message that they see here when they hit that short-term limit. Uh, the long-term limit. Uh, the biggest thing to consider here is that sometimes clients will want to reschedule their appointment for three, four, five, six months from now. So if you have this set too low to like 90 days, uh, then people, you know, right now uh, it's November and this is the middle of a busy season for a lot of people. And so our clients are booking into January and February. Well, if I have this set to 90 days, people can't book and they're just shown that I don't have availability because my schedule is 100% full through Christmas uh, and primarily into January. And so I'm going to change this. Um, I put this about two weeks past the furthest point that people want. I want people to be able to book. So for me, it's actually like 380 days uh, because I'm okay if they book up to a year out. Um, some people have other jobs and you don't know your schedule a month from now. So you have to limit that to 30 days. Um, so you just want to play around with that and just understand if you make this too restricted, uh, it's going to become an issue. Now, the last part of this video is for the administrators on the account. When you come to your company policies, the things that you want to edit and handle are first your outside service area rule. And you have two options. You can say, listen, anybody outside my service area, don't allow them to book and tell them, I'm sorry, you're outside my service area. But consider whether one of your technicians is on the edge of their service area and a client just 10 minutes outside the area wants to book an appointment. Well, it actually makes sense to offer them a day that you're already out that way. 
And so that's where turning this option on to say, listen, I do want to allow people outside my service area to book if they are currently scheduled within a 10 minute radius. And so you'll want to turn that on to create a, a, a more of a gray or fuzzy boundary uh, that ebbs and flows depending on where and when you're scheduled to be around your service area. Uh, the self-schedule special instructions will put a special message on the first step of your scheduling workflow to greet clients and give them, you know, some instructions. Uh, some people like to go ahead and put in here, you know, we service this area, this area, and this area. Um, and so if you're outside that area, email us and we'll give you a recommendation. Um, and lastly, handling routes of invalid addresses. It happens. Addresses change, people move, typos, uh, even though we minimize that with our type ahead and address validation, sometimes a typo happens. And so rather than the smart routes breaking for that day, you want to have some kind of fallback for uh, an estimated drive time. If you're in a metropolitan area, you want this to be a little bit more. If you're in a rural area, you want that to be a little bit less. Um, default technicians, if you have multiple technicians, you can choose to have people auto select their preferred service provider or select any technician available. Uh, so you can change that company wide setting here. And lastly, address validation requirements. Uh, we do not recommend that you change this unless you are in an area that has really bad results with Google Maps. Uh, if you change this to relaxed, it will allow somebody to just book an intersection, a city, or a street. And you will have to do a little extra work to figure out where the address is and contact the client when that happens. Uh, so somebody could just put in, you know, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, book an appointment, and it will just book that appointment for the center of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, this is a necessary step sometimes in rural areas where Google doesn't have the best street information and address information. Um, but again, keep in mind, you know, if less than 5% or 98% of your clients are able to get through and 2 to 5% get caught with bad addresses, that's actually doing really well. You don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, but be very cautious when editing this rule. Finally, your service list. Now, I'm not going to cover our master service list. That's a different video. But the most important thing here is your cost visibility policy. Uh, in your master service list, you can assign a cost to each service. And in Gazelle, you have the option to show the cost or don't show the cost to the client in the booking workflow. So when would you not want to show the cost? Well, for instance, some people uh, cover their pricing information on their website. So clients will actually see the pricing information before they choose to book an appointment. In that case, you want to turn prices off. But if your website doesn't cover your prices or doesn't cover it well, and you want people to also see the price as they book an appointment, then you will want to turn on the pricing. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out and let us know. Thank you for using Gazelle.